When we're confronted by challenges beyond our control, the immediate response of any individual is to ignore that challenge, to try and push it out of their lives. That's because humans are designed to want to be able to predict every situation and have power over the things that confront us. In a perfect world, we know when anything happens, why it happens, how it happens, but most importantly, we control if it happens. So when people are opposed by the unknown, they start to panic. When change occurs, more often than not, it's perceived as inherently negative. It wasn't anything anyone was able to predict, and therefore it's something we automatically reject. This instinct, this fear of change, is part of what makes us human. But at the same time, it can also hinder us from achieving a higher state of existence. In early 2014, I was about to make a decision that to me at the time was more important than any other in my life. It would affect my future far more than I could possibly imagine. All these years later, I now realize how insignificant that decision seems to me now. But of course, there was no way I could have known at the time. That decision was about which junior high I would be attending the following fall. You see, all my friends, everyone I was close with, would be going to one school, and I, on the other hand, would be going to another. And for the first few months at that new school, I found it difficult to cope. It was an environment where I didn't know anyone, I felt out of place, I didn't know how to behave, and I never took the steps to try and meet anyone new. It took me a long time to realize that if I never took the steps to change, then it wasn't going to get better. I wasn't getting anywhere in my current state. And that realization is something a lot of people have problems dealing with. But that realization is also where change begins to occur. In 1977, two researchers named Carlo D. Clement and James Prochaska began development on a theory of therapy intended to assess an individual's openness to change. That theory was called the trans-theoretical model, and in its entirety, it describes the six stages of change. The first, being pre-contemplation, is the stage in which people aren't open to change. They have no desire to change their behavior whatsoever. Now, this could be due to a variety of reasons. Bad habits, fear, all these things, addiction, add up to pre-contemplation. The second stage, contemplation, Individuals are more open to change, more open to new possibilities, and recognize that their current behavior could have real consequences. The third stage, preparation. In this stage, people start to take small steps towards modifying their behavior. The next stage is action. And at this point, people have completely altered the way they behave on a higher level, but they need to work actively to maintain it, tying into the fifth stage, maintenance, which is the period of time that people sustain their modified behavior leading to the sixth and final stage, termination. At this point, people no longer desire to return to the unhealthy actions they're once conformed to. Now, everyone at some point in their lives will go through these six stages, because no matter how advanced humans become, we'll always be arrogant and stubborn by nature. To quote George Orwell, the author of 1984, every generation imagines itself to be more intelligent than the one that came before it, and wiser than the one that came after it. This idea that we're more intelligent than those before and after us leads us to reject ideas from those lower entities. An ancient Greek philosopher, Plato, also speaks about this topic in his Allegory of the Cave. It talks about a cave with three prison prisoners trapped, unable to move their heads. Their image of reality is based solely off the light outside of the cave and the shadows it makes on the walls inside. Flowers don't have colors, smells, or textures. Instead, there are two-dimensional black objects that sway from time to time. Now, the same idea follows trees, birds, clouds, and people. They are solely defined by the outline they make on the walls of the cave. Eventually, one of the prisoners escapes and is greeted by a world of light, color, sound, three-dimensional images, and everything else that defines reality as we know it. At first, he's in shock by how, world, how different the world really is. But in time, he starts to digest this new perspective of reality. After comprehending this new universe, he returns to the cave to explain to the other two how flawed their understanding of the universe really is. Now, the other two prisoners instantly deny the notion of what they believe being false. The fact is that our perception of reality is so perfect and well-defined that shattering it is malicious and psychotic. Accepting that what you spend time and effort on, working on, believing in, means throwing away your pride and your ego but only by seeking out new ways to cope with situations and taking on change will we be able to move forward as a society. Pride and intelligence can be blinding, and that is one of the biggest challenges 
humanity has had to face ever since our inception. But life will find a way. Whatever manifestations of change might approach you, just take comfort in the fact that we're all part of the immense canvas of life, with each decision we make leading to a world of new possibilities. Whether you know that as God, fate, the universe, the self, whatever it may be, just understand that you'll be taking the steps to becoming the best possible version of yourself that you know you can be.